Hi, this is Misha. We've got a video of a gun you don't really see much on YouTube about or anywhere. It's kind of a lesser known variant of a variant from China. This is a Chinese Norinco Sile, S-I-L-E, New York, New York. Import 156S-1. This gun in and of itself is pretty typical. Underfolding Type 56 style gun. But its story, I think, is a little unique. Plus, I, again, I couldn't find a great deal of info out on there, so I thought we'd just share. Now, just for table candy, I also brought out my B West import. This is a true pre ban brought in around 85. Fixed stock, obviously, underfolding spike bayonet, 14 millimeter threaded muzzle. Most of your Norinco type guns would have the slant break, whereas your Polytex would usually have the nut. And again, this is a relatively early import marked AKS. This is a true pre ban. And this is the closest to an actual Chinese military this bog standard type 56 that came into the USA. As we know, in March of 1989, George W. Bush Sr. signed an executive order banning further importation of so-called assault rifles into the USA. And they, they banned several by name, including the 56S, the AKS, Polytech so-called Legends. Just yeah, They went through all the whole list, 56S-1, 56S-2, 84S, so on and so forth. And they knew they couldn't get every possible name, so they also banned features. Imported guns could no longer have pistol grip. They could no longer have underfolding, side folding, adjustable, collapsible stocks. They could no longer have threaded barrels or more specifically exposed threads with, with removable devices. They could no longer have flash hiders. And they could no longer have bayonet lugs. At this time, they still allowed guns to come in, able to take standard, what we know today as high capacity magazines. Well, as most of us know, beginning in 1990, the Mac 90 appeared. And this is the, the quintessential post-ban 90s Chinese import. Thumb hole stock, they don't have a cleaning rod under the barrel, they don't usually have a threaded barrel. If they do, there's a nut welded on. There's no provision at all for any kind of bayonet. Usually standard hand guards. And they have a, a butthole, excuse me, thumb hole stock. They still took high capacity magazines for the most part. There were some sub variants that were limited to five or 10 rounds with a little rivet, but we won't get into those here. Obviously they did not have pistol grips and some of them had slant cut receivers so they couldn't take standard furniture even if you pulled the thumb hole stock off. They imported a lot of Mac 90s. However, there was a short, short period of time between March when the ban came in, in November, December of 1989, where you had guns caught in customs. These were guns that were already out of China, either on ships or more often already in the USA, in customs, or even coming right into importers' warehouses. But they had not been sold off yet from the importer. So they were at some point in the process. These guns would, of course, have been Pre-Ban style guns, 56S's, Polytech Legends, AK, which are known as AK-47S's, by the way. So on and so forth. But this ban comes down, banning guns by name and also banning many features. Well, what's an importer to do? Well, what they did was the 156S-1. In a bit of cheekiness that sometimes I think the gun industry might lack today, they said, fine, you ban... You, you ban the 56S, okay, we'll stamp a one in front of it. 
This happened with other people. For example, the HK91 was banned. They stepped a one behind it, making the HK911, which I guess was an early call for help when they saw what was happening. There was also the Springfield SAR3, which was overstamped with an eight, which is often called the, 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 the overstamped guns, and I have one of those too. So there were several guns caught in customs at that time. They had to be hastily reworked, and this is one of them here. Yay, it actually chambered. Ah, underfolding stuff. And that was with Wolf with the same Wolf that we used last time, right? Yep. It originally was a standard pre-band gun, had the one stamped in it here to make it not a 56S. Mm -hmm. It had a t tiny tack weld. You might not even be able to see it. You can see where part of it was broken. This was I didn't touch this gun. This is how it came to me. But there's a tack weld here that held on a muzzle nut. Probably most of these broke off on their own initiative because they're, they're tiny, just a bead. Underneath that were standard 14 millimeter threads still. The bayonet lug was machined off quite neatly. The, of course, the base is still here. It's just the edges were... So it looks fine. It's not ugly. They did a good job, honestly, taking it off. You wouldn't even necessarily know they were supposed to something be there. These took standard mags. Now there's a little bit of disagreement about the back. These had underfolding stocks on them from China, and they were sold with underfolding stocks. Let me fold this up here, guys. Now there's a disagreement as to how these were sold. Some say they folded up the stock as such, and they welded on a small tang in the back to hold a screw, stretching out here. And they put, and they obviously took the pistol grip off, and they put a thumbhole stock on, which is held on with one screw here, and then use the grip screw. Others say that no, they were just sold as is, and they didn't monkey with the stocks at all. I bet both were true, but I think the ones with the thumbhole stocks are more common because this tang was welded on so crappily, much like how this. Uh, muzzle nut was welded on it was easy to just take off and then grind it a little flush and then cold blew it so most of these guns have a little bit of discoloration up here where the tang was removed some people did a very good job matching bluing though but either way pull your thumb hole stock off and your underfolding stock wasn't even usually welded or pinned it would just unfold though on a normal pistol grip there you go. And half the time these pistol grips were included in the box. This is because during this interim period there was a grace time of about six months. It ended around November of 1989. Again, the, the import ban was just coming in. It, in the beginning, it was just interpreted that guns could not be imported with these evil features. But once in the USA, you could re-add them. This is why you see a lot of converted Galils and SAR-38s like mine and guns like this here. They would include, like I said, even include the parts in the box or sell them as a small upcharge so you can convert them back. Well, they decided this wasn't in the spirit of the law, and this is where 922R is born and so on and so forth. But they gave a grandfather period. If you had converted your postman gun, post-March 1989 gun, before December of 1989, it was okay because there was no clear ruling that it was illegal before that. It was a legal gray area. No one said you couldn't do it and importers, manufacturers were even selling the parts with them or including them. So it was kind of entrapment to make it illegal. Now you were supposed to already have converted it before November, but how would you know? I mean, if, if the gun is a, one of these caught in customs guns, there's no way to know if someone actually did the conversion work before they and so it's kind of an honor system it's really just a way to give people an out 
all around, the government and individuals. And these 156S1s are an example of that. Many say, oh, you need 922R parts for these. You do not. If this was converted before the end of 1989, under the law, you're okay to have it all Chinese. That said, even if it, this wasn't the case, we all know how enforced 922R is. But even if you're one of those types that likes to obey everything to the letter, which is fine, that's your, you know, that's the, great, it's fine. Still, these would be okay if converted before. Same goes for the SAR 38s, the HK 991s, and the, the several others that kind of made it in during that brief little time period. Because the argument was these guns were already bought and paid for by the importers and it wouldn't be just to, to already ban them without any kind of recourse for them to sell them, you know, because they bought them in good faith. We took this out today. I'm happy to report it ran perfectly. No repeat of the Polytech legend. I told Jay, I said, if this gun jams on us, <laughs> I'm calling it quits with, with Chinese guns. They just hate me. Now the funny thing, it ran perfectly with that same polymer coated wolf ammo that gave us so much trouble in the Polytech Legend. And again, that ammo ran fine in arsenals and other guns, but it ran fine in this uh, 56S as well. So, good gun, fun to shoot. Um, you know, it's as comfortable as any underfolder is to shoot. It's got a nice attractive wood on it. The stock has quite good lockup for an underfolder, a little bit of vertical, excuse me, vertical play. Really no side to side to speak of. Locks in very securely. Nice pistol grip. This was a neat little find. If you find one and it's priced right, I encourage you to pick it up. It has all the quality of a pre ban but it should not have a pre ban price. This is not a true pre ban it's that gray interim. These tend to go for more than Mac 90s, even converted ones, but less than true pre ban 56Ss or even fixed stock you know, AKS is like this. So it's just a neat little thing you don't hear much about. So if you see a bayonet lug like this shaved off, you, you might have an idea of what you got. And there, again, there will be this one rather crudely stamped on the side. And then again, this is a sile import, New York, New York. So if you see that, you'll know what it is. We thought we'd just share. Chinese guns are popular and they're always fun to take out to the range. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you like the video, please click like. If you haven't already subscribed and can do so, we'd really appreciate it. We have quite a few other vids on uh, AKs, quite a, other, a lot of AK content. So we try to give that because we really like the AK around here. Nice double hook trigger on these. Good guns. Just don't pay a pre band price for one. Well, as always, we really appreciate you tuning in, and please tune in again next time for more hopefully unique and interesting videos. Catch you then.